Uh, praise be to the name of the living God Almighty. Hallelujah. May the name of the Lord be blessed evermore. Welcome to the Believer's Love Nation Ministries and welcome to Sunday service tonight. God bless you all who are joining us from the different nations of the world and here at the Believer's Love Nation Ministry. We want to say we love you all and we thank you for joining us for Sunday service tonight. Thank you for joining us even at the hearing of the word in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We wish to be able in the future to bring you our whole service even as we work on getting all the equipment we need so you can have fun with us because it is always fun here in service in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you all. So tonight's uh, teaching is going to be on work. And I was giving a testimony of how the Lord gave me this message. The Lord gave me this message in a dream. He gave me this whole message in a dream yesterday. He gave me an entire message speaking and I was perceiving with my spirit as well as seeing the words that I was hearing and perceiving in my spirit being written on a white screen. Praise the name of a living God. It was so many words because it's an entire sermon. And I remembered as much as I could remember, which I believe is everything. And we bless the Lord tonight that I'm able to speak exactly what the Lord gave me to speak tonight in Jesus' mighty name. And tonight's teaching is going to be about work. Praise the name of a living God. Work. It's a very huge subject. It's a very big thing, but we will try as much as we can in this sermon to break it down so you can understand it, and by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, you will be edified by the message tonight. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So work, huge subject. What is work? We could begin there. You know, it has a lot of definitions. <laughs> Somebody could say, my work is my job. Very interesting, <laughs> you know. But there's a huge difference between work and a job. You know, work is a big thing. Praise God Almighty. The job is the small thing. It's the smaller, you know. And I'll keep giving you those differences as we move on. But yes, by definition, if you go to the dictionary, you'll find a lot of definitions. These are some of the few that I found. Anything we put our hands to, to produce something involving our minds, our mental effort, and our physical effort. Anything that you put our hands to, to do, or any task that we do involving our mental and physical effort is work. Praise the name of a living God. Now, that's the definition in the dictionary. I'm not English. I'm Ugandan, so I don't know... <laughs> if there's a lot of uh, descriptions uh, for work, but that's not the very important thing here. We're gonna look at work according to the Word of God. Now, you know that God created this world in seven days. He worked six days and rested one of the days, which is the seventh day. Praise the name of a living God. That brings us to the truth that God is the origin of work. Work has its origin in God. Praise the name of a living God. Work brought about everything that you see in this world. Or you can call it creation. Praise the name of a living God. It was work. And God worked a certain amount of days and he rested a certain amount of days. Oh, one day. Praise the name of a living God. So he rested one day, but there's a big question there. Did he stop working? <laughs> Did God or has God retired? Not at all. Praise the name of a living God. He rested on that day and from then onwards, he is working. Praise the name of a living God. So he rested just to let us know that even as we work, go about our work, we have to rest and then continue work. Now, here's the very interesting difference. Work has no retirement. 
I'm beginning to confuse somebody out there. <laughs> work has no retirement. We don't retire from our work, you know. And yet we retire from our jobs. Praise the name of a living. In work and a job, I want us to begin seeing those differences early on before we move forward because you will understand what I, whatever I'm going to say better when we move on having understood the difference between work and a job praise the name of a living god they have uh, those two have a lot of similarity but i got like i told you work is the bigger thing a job is the smaller a job is included in your work actually you can turn your job into rather you can turn your work into your job but your job may not necessarily be translated into your work and I'll give you all those differences. Well, we can see out a few, you know. Work is God-given. If you have your notebooks, just pull them out and begin to note these very important facts and truths. Work is God-given. And I can prove that to you. When you read in the Bible, God created us in His image. He worked. It is in His nature to work. Praise the name of a living God. And he created us and commanded us to work. Praise the name of a living God. Amen. How did he command us to work? He told us to replenish the earth, to fill the earth. He gave us charge over the earth to govern the earth. We could never govern the earth except through work. He commanded us to till the land. Praise the name of a living God. Every nation, every kingdom, every state is sustained and every government is sustained by work. Praise the name of a living God. And so because we, have, we hail from the kingdom above, the origin of all things, the origin of work, in that same kingdom, which is where our life is, because our life is spiritual, like we have been learning all along, you know. We have been given to work. To perpetuate, to continue, to bring about the influence of God here on earth. That is only through our work. Praise the name of a living God. To subdue the earth. You cannot subdue the earth except you work. Praise the name of a living God. Except you produce something involving your physical and mental energy. And produce something which is work. That's the only way we govern the world. That's the only way we enforce the dominion, the power of God, the authority of God here on earth. He has sent us out to work. And now because God's kingdom is eternal, work is eternal. Praise the name of a living God. Even after we're done here, we're going up to heaven to sing praises to him. Praise the name of a living God. To join the angels and the heavenly being, having been transformed in our bodies, to work <laughs> still. To worship God. Praise the name of a living God Almighty. So work is eternal. You can write that down. You can take it to the bank. It is the truth. Praise the name of a living God. While a job is or can be temporary. You know, because you retire from doing a certain job. But you never retire from your work. I just want to give you an example to just simplify what I just said. You can retire from your job, but you may never retire from your work. Now, because work is natural and God-given, if you read in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, had different skills. There was a tribe who were blacksmiths. There was a tribe who were good in trade. There was a tribe who were farmers. There, were, there was a tribe who were herdsmen or whatever. There was a tribe that was the priests. So in their lineage, in their nature, God had placed work in their different nature. Praise the name of a living God. In other words, work is seen to be generational. You can write that down too. Work is generational. It comes from God to flow through your bloodline. Praise the name of a living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus' father was a carpenter. Praise the name of a living God. And Jesus helped him as a carpenter. And you could find all the boy children in Jesus' family were carpenters. 
that run through their bloodline. Praise the name of a living God. Hallelujah. While on a job, you will work some years, like in Sweden, you retire at 65. That's retirement age, you know. But there's this interesting thing. We're talking about work and a job, you know. There's this interesting thing. Even when people retire from their job, they don't want to stop working. There's something in them that's still pushing them to wake up in the morning and do something. That's because work was given to them by God. Well, they're... Their job span has come to a conclusion at 65 years. Their contract probably has come to a conclusion. I had many contracts of mine that have come to a conclusion. Hallelujah. Somebody help us with uh, the child so they don't. Maybe you could soothe them a little bit outside there as as they get well so we can continue in the word of God hallelujah so yes uh, your contract your, your, your job span comes to a conclusion you're retired but you still want to wake up every morning to do something do you know why it's because that thing that you want to continue doing after your job was actually your work praise God almighty with a job a job you have a choice people choose and they're like let me study to do this because there's more money in this. You know, I'll get more money working in a bank than I would get working in a restaurant. So you can choose to do a job. And later on, we're going to be seeing how that has led to people not enjoying the blessings that come with work. Many people are doing something that God didn't call them to do. Praise the name of a living God. Many people have chosen to do stuff because it earns more money, because it earns more respect in society. Some, some people call certain jobs respectable and others not respectable. Praise the name of a living God. So they choose to do one which they think is respectable. Praise the name of a living God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's to do with jobs. But with work, it was ordained and given to you by God. It's actually connected, very connected to your divine purpose. God sent you here in this world with a purpose, with a work to do. That work oftentimes is your gift, is your talent, that thing that you do better than anybody else and you don't have to apply a lot of effort to get very much results. Praise the name of a living God. That talent, because that's what a talent is. You know, I could wake up in the morning and sing because singing is given to me by God as a gift. And that's my work, you know. I'm a teacher of the word. That's my work. It was given to me naturally by God. Every time, if we get into a conversation, I find myself teaching the word of God. Without nobody telling me, Pastor, now I, I need you to teach me the word of God. We're just in a conversation. And I'm not like, but you remember how it's written like this in this book? Do you know that uh, before you know it, we've gone an hour. We're talking the word of God. I'm teaching the word of God. It's natural. It was given by God. That's my work. Praise the name of a living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you also note these few things down, God gave you your work to have you be in total control and total charge of your schedule. Praise the name of a living God. In other words, with our work that is God-given, if you really look, if you get to know what purpose God created you for and what work it is, so to speak, that God put in your life naturally for you to do, and you put everything that needs to be put on it, the diligence, the accountability, the honesty, the everything, we're going to look at those. You most definitely be self-employed, always. Praise the name of a living God. To some, many people, God has given to be self-employed through their work, through that gift, through that talent. Praise the name of a living God. And if you, if you go to school, school teaches you how to turn your work into your job. Praise the name of a living God. For example, I could be a natural runner, you know, and then I get some education about signing contracts and this and this, participating in the Olympics, signing up for, for being a member of a national team and stuff like that. It's already in me to run, praise the name of a living God. So I'm finding out in school what needs to be done so I can represent my country. 
And as I keep doing that, I keep getting paid. As I, and as I keep, keep getting paid, my work has eventually turned into my job. Praise the name of the living God. Now, if God gave me that talent, that gift, and I end up somewhere in a bank behind a counter, I can tell you I could never be settled there. I could never be settled there. Because it's something different that God gave me. It's a different plan. It's a different work that God gave me. I'll be a runner all my life. And even if my bones can't carry me anymore, I'll, you, find up, I'll, I'll, you find out I'll be a coach. You know, after running my, my, my strength out, you know, in my, in my 40s or 50s, then I start to be a coach. It's natural. It's natural. I start to train others to begin to run because it's my work. It's what God has given me. Now, what the world focuses on and what is bringing us trouble is the job, which is usually not necessarily what God sent you to do. You're doing it because your parents told you that I need you to be a doctor. That is where we, we, we go wrong, especially in this part of the world in Africa. Parents are telling students or kids to study what they think will bring them prestige as parents. It's like, I need a doctor in this house. Doesn't matter whether somebody has the talent or not. Doesn't matter if somebody knows sciences or not. They send you to be a doctor. And they tell, if you don't bring back that degree as a doctor, you and I are not friends anymore. I'm not your parent anymore. That happens in the third world. Parents get something totally different and impart it on someone. You find a musician struggling with sciences, struggling to become a doctor. They are naturally a musician. And after they come out of school, those are the doctors you hear are making mistakes and people are losing their lives. Why? He was not a doctor. The parents dragged him there. Praise the name of a living God. Amen. The Bible says that I will bless the work of your hands. Praise the name of a living God. But see, if that work is not blessed, it can only be one other way. It will be cursed. If blessing means yielding positive fruit and it is not blessed, see, God commanded the blessing on the work of your hands. The work of your hands that he ordained for you since the foundations of the earth. When you were in your mother's womb or before you were formed in your mother's womb. That's the one he talked about blessing. Praise the name of a living God. So many people find trouble. They are working, but the blessing is not there. They are working, but the increase is not coming. They are working, but life seems to be getting into a whole other mess always. Some have drifted from their work that's naturally given them by God, and they've taken jobs just, just to feed in the group. You know, all my friends are bankers. I must be a banker. Praise the name of a living God. And then you go for that. And you struggle all the years. And you find the person is stealing all the money in the bank and doing all corruption. And in a few years, they're fired and they're put in jail. Why? They're not in God's purpose. They're not doing the work that God ordained for them from the very foundations of the earth. Praise the name of a living God. Hallelujah. This is all the things that bring about work, not bringing success. And yet God commanded a blessing on the work of our hands. But are you doing that work that God purposed for you to do? Are you living? It goes back to what we were learning before. Are you living in God's purpose for your life? I told you, I've done jobs. I have worked jobs. I have worked for the government in Sweden. I've worked for the state. I've worked as a project leader. You know, I have worked for Stockholm International School. I've worked as a teacher, worked as a project leader. I've also worked as a dishwasher in a restaurant and bar in Sweden, yes. I've done different jobs, but my work is to teach the word of God. Those have been my jobs. And guess what? I have done many of them, but none of them has gotten me, well, I could say they temporarily carried me through that period but doing them, I knew my work. It is not that I, I didn't know my work and then I, I tried out to, to work at a restaurant. No, I already knew my God-ordained given work from heaven 
from the very start. And I kept it in mind, even as I was doing these things, because I was new in the country and I had to establish myself and had to put some feet in the ground. But I knew that at, at, at a point, which is not very far, I'm going to be doing what God called me to do, my work that God ordained for me from the foundations of the earth, which is teaching the word of God and singing to him. Praise the name of a living God. Hallelujah. So I set out to do the different jobs temporarily. I always looked forward to my God-given work. Because guess what? As I did them, I never realized much success with them except giving me food to eat and some clothes to put on. But God has promised me exceeding abundant above all that I could ask or think. God has promised to increase me, to multiply me, to make me like Abraham. Now see all that multiplication and in, 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 increase only can, comes when you are doing your work. <laughs> No job in the world, if it is not in line with what God called you to do, no job in the world is going to give you success. No job in the world. Except if it's a job that is in line. In line. See, I told you your work can be translated into your job. Like we saw uh, a natural, talented runner getting into professional athletics. A natural, talented carpenter setting up a carpenter store. You see, do you realize those are the businessmen that are very, very successful? A natural talented farmer registering his farm as a company with the government and beginning to, to sell their produce. And they don't even know how much money they have. Animals are just there giving birth and, and the crops are just yielding and everything is just, they don't know how much money they have. It's their nature, it's their talent. Praise the name of a living God. Now the trouble comes when that one wants to come work as a teacher in a university. It's like, you know, lecturers get a lot of money. I think I better go and do a degree about it. And that's pretty much what we have turned work into. We're totally out of line with what God called us to do or what God ordained for us as work. And then we end up getting all these problems, unemployment and all that. Praise the name of a living God. Hallelujah. Work is a divine principle. He that worketh not, Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 3.10, he that does not work shall not eat. He's talking about the work that God ordained for you. Praise the name of a living God. Hallelujah. So it's a divine principle. While a job may not necessarily be one, a job is given you by your employer. And he has rules pertaining to employers and employees, masters to servants. How masters should treat their servants and how servants should treat their masters. Praise the name of a living God. Diligence and all that. So work is a divine principle. Meaning if you do not, if you walk outside of the one that was created for you from the very foundations of the world, you're never going to have success. Have you seen people working a job that is very high paying and they don't have peace at all in their lives? I've seen people in the Western world doing a job and getting fed up, feeling like they're slaves on a job. Guess what? It is not what God created you to do. You're just doing it because you have to do it. I'm doing this job because I want to pay my bills. I've talked to engineers who are so depressed with their work and they get and they retire because of depression of work. They don't want to, they, they tell you this is slavery. I feel like a slave. I feel like I'm held. And this is a high paying job. And they have gone to school and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to acquire the skill. Praise the name of a living God. Hallelujah. But because it's not their divine ordained work from the very foundations of the earth, they end up working so many years and yet end up saying, I have been disappointed with all my years of work. I have been disappointed. It's a slavery. I want to get out of it. That's when you talk about early retirement. And many are out there looking, what can I do? You know, I'm tired of working for this company. I'm tired of working for Apple. You know, I get lots of money. You will find them if, you, if, if God graces you to travel the world. You will find rich people having high paying jobs. Somebody earns 
about $20,000 a month, and they're telling you, I'm so sick and tired of this job. Well, we could say, yeah, many of them who don't have Jesus have that kind of life, but even the ones that have Jesus, if you are not in God's divine purpose for your life, that happens often. Praise the name of a living God. They're telling you, I'm tired. I'm stressed out with this kind of work, you know. And you're like, don't you want to earn more money and help people? It, and you ask them, what have you used with your money? They're like, well, it's in the bank. I've kept it. Well, I bought an apartment. I bought a yacht. You know, I bought a nice car. I don't have any debts. But I feel I, feel I need to do something more. You know, <laughs> they don't know God's purpose for their life. So they're trying to discover it much later on. Well, it's never too late, of course. You can always seek God and come to God and fall before him and do some 40-day some fast and ask God, what was your original plan for my life? It's never too late. He can put you in line and you will find peace once you are back in line with what God preordained for you to do. Praise the name of a living God. When you find your work, you have found your peace. I'm telling you, I'm at peace right now up here because I'm doing my work that God created me to do. Praise the name of a living God. A lot of people don't realize serving God is, is a work. <laughs> I don't know if in their Bibles they don't read the Levites, they don't read the priests who God commanded to serve him in his house. He stopped them from doing every other job and he told the other tribes to do the jobs and he told these ones to wait on him in the temple, to pray on behalf of the people, to offer sacrifices on behalf of the people. Yes, we have Christ the high priest, but the order of God has not been eliminated. God, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His kingdom runs on certain order and principles. Praise the name of a living God. They have not changed. But a lot of people would mock servants of God. And it's like they don't want to work. They only want to collect offerings. But it's a work. Praise the name of a living God. It's a work. Just like you work in a bank and you have to study some books and you have to read certain things, you have to improve yourself. Even servants of God have to study. They have to improve themselves. The Bible says study to show thy, thyself approved as workman without blemish. Praise the name of We study. We pray for the anointing. We fast 40 days, 30 days, 3 days, 1 day. You're fasting on behalf of the people. You're doing your work that God called you to do. Our results is people pouring into the kingdom of God. Once we see people's lives being changed and transformed, the sick being healed and all that, that is the fruit of our work. Praise the name of a living God. It's a work like any other. And it pains my heart that a lot of people in the world do not realize that. Praise the name of a living God. But no matter what, you know, that was done to the apostles and that was done to Christ. They called him false. You know, he did those miracles. The apostles did all that. And Paul comes out and says, I'm a tent maker. <laughs> so no one of you says I preach the gospel for my own self gain. No, I'm a tent maker and that provides for my needs and those around me. And that was because he was preaching amongst the Gentiles. The Israelites rejected the apostle Paul. So he came to the Gentiles. Actually, God called him to, to the Gentiles. But the Peters, who were Jews in every sense of that word, who still upheld the Jewish values, have you ever heard Peter doing a job <laughs> other than being an apostle of Jesus Christ and being a servant of God? No. Paul was because he was serving amongst the Gentiles. They didn't know the principle. It was new to them. The things of God and the principles of God in the Old Testament were new. Praise the name of a living God. Hallelujah. So let's talk about briefly the question of unemployment. And we have seen some points that, that allude to this very fact or truth. The question of unemployment, especially in this part of the world, in Africa. Why is there so much unemployment? Do you know that unemployment was unheard of in the Bible? Everyone in the Bible had work because God created everyone with the work to do. It's only that those in the Bible cared enough to find out what work is running through their bloodline, and they did exactly that. Like I told you, the 12 tribes of Israel had different talents and were doing different things. They had the ones who were the soldiers, the fighters, the ones that were the blacksmiths, the ones that were the gold refiners and blah, blah, blah. I don't know how they call them. The priests, the farmers, 
you know. It was running through their bloodline. When daddy was a farmer, grandfather was also a farmer, the kids were farmers. It was a family chain of business. You go to the United States of America, the richest people have a family chain in business. It runs from the great, great, great grandfathers. Real estate from great grandfather, grandfather, father, children, and they begin to teach their children as soon as they, they begin to understand, they begin to bring them into real estate. And it runs like that. That generation is known for real estate all their lives. Praise the name of living God. You're not going to be surprised if Donald Trump's children have a lot of estate or dealing in real estate. Because the father is dealing in real estate. The son comes and becomes a real estate mogul. The children, I believe, have some estate. And they're trading estate. Praise the name. In fact, most of them have worked in the father's company. That is how to build generational wealth. In that kind of setting, which was God's original setting, you don't have unemployment. You don't see unemployment in the Bible. Because even when a woman lost her husband, the one that was providing for the family, now they took the other route, which I'm not advising you to take. But yeah, they had to work. And, and it was not go to God ordained. That's why God said, if you find one doing like that, if you find one prostituting around, stone them to death, sadly. Praise the name of a living God. I think the people of the old did not know this principle. That the work that God had given them did not only include what you do to bring money. Your work is not necessarily that which you do and brings you money. No. It is whatever you do that produces something. Whatever you put your effort to, mental and physical, to produce, to bring out something. Praise the name of a living God. It may not be necessarily money. So these women were mothers. If the husband died, you could have stayed a widow and work raising the kids. Praise the name of a living God. But since they so attributed their providence to, 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 to the money that they're getting from a job, they chose actually that's not now work. It's not what God created them to be. They choose a job of prostitution, sadly to be able to take care of the kids because the husband, the provider, main provider of the family, I could say, has passed on. But see, they took a job. They left their work as a mother because, yes, they are no longer a wife now. The husband has passed on. Praise the name of a living God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Let's go into the things that must be in place for work to produce good results and to be sustainable. Because work is eternal. You don't stop from your work, <laughs> I'm telling you. You do it, and after, when you're so old, if your work is very physical, when you're so old, you end up naturally becoming a coach, trying to help some young people do the same thing who have the same work ordained for them by God. Praise the name of living God. If it's not so physical, you become an advisor. That's what the elders are in Africa, you know. You find an elder, he was, he, his first job was a member of parliament. He's got the talent of leadership, you know. He became a government minister on Obote. <laughs> he was a government minister on, on Amin. He was a government minister on every president and up to the current president of Uganda. He's still serving in the government. And yes, his retirement age comes. He can't get up in the morning any more to come, then they sit back at home and begin to run the nation through advice. Praise the name of a living. That never stops until they die. They'll wake up in the morning, even if nobody has given them a call, and they will call somebody. And they will say, my son, you know, uh, you see I was holding the same ministry as you held, but that money that was coming in from, uh, from the US aid, this is how we did it. I think I'm seeing some trouble there. See, they're naturally, you know, they're glued onto their work. Praise the name of a living God. I'll give you a funny one. Somebody fought in the first world war, you know, and they get old. And you find them in the house getting a gun and thinking like, you know what? <laughs> There's some enemy here, you, you know. It's because the work is natural. It was given by God. And there's so many people like that. They were a DJ and artist, and they used to sing and travel the world singing. And even after when their strength cannot put them on stage anymore, you find them in the house, you know. Uh, putting on the show in their house. They're old and they're like, man, I love music. They got their headphones and it's their work that God gave them. Praise the name of a living God. 
It is not their job. They did their job of performing and touring the world, and they came to retirement age. You know, the voice cannot, you know, sound as good anymore. So they begin to just enjoy music and maybe train the young generation. You find them natural courses, coaches. These are people who don't even ask money from you to, to court you. They just love to see a musician because it was their thing. Praise the name of a living God. And they guide you through what you're supposed to do. So here are the things, and we're talking about the question of unemployment, you know. Things that bring about unemployment, but if, if, if held, if, if upheld, you know, these principles will never bring about unemployment. We would never have unemployment here in Africa. The youth would never cry to the government for jobs if they realized the principle of work and separated it from, the, from what a job is. Because what the youth are looking for is work. Rather, it's jobs, not work. They have work that was given to them, naturally, like my boys here, are film actors. Thank God. You should thank God that he, he showed you your purpose early on. Praise God. People are suffering. They are actors, but they're in banks, sitting behind a counter. So tired and depressed. <laughs> Praise the name of a living God. Amen. Doing all the dirty deals. But you realize that you were actors and you went for it. And through that, that's what God says, that I will bless the work of your hands. So God will bless your filmmaking in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. amen and amen. So let's go to those things. Loyalty is one. Loyalty. Because work is eternal, you've got to be loyal to your work. I've seen some musicians like P. Diddy <laughs> turn actors and businessmen and longing to go back to the stage. Like, guys, you know, this time I'm coming back to the stage. I miss my home. Stage is my home. Like, I don't see, I made a lot of money, but I don't feel at home. I don't feel any peace, you know. I've made all the money I need to make, but, but stage is my home. <laughs> you know, I want to return back. Can you imagine how strong work is? So P. Diddy was not loyal to his work for some moments. <laughs> You know, he drifted into other things and left his work. And now when he looks at the young people, you know, doing the thing even much better, shutting down stadiums, he's like, man, I'm supposed to be there. I ain't supposed to be here sitting and asking people how much money we made off, off of this new brand of, of whiskey that we made. Sorry to use that example, but yeah, it's a, the it's a world where we're living. Loyalty. You must be loyal to your work. Like I told you, temporarily you can move into a job because of a circumstance, but never forget your work. Be loyal to your work. That way you will live in peace and you will be successful in everything you do. Praise God Almighty. Honesty. At work, even at your job. Be honest. I find a lot of trouble in this part of the world, dishonesty in work. Cheating. God could never bless anything that is involves cheating. When you sell to me more than, than you're supposed to sell, if you want to be like those tax collectors in the Bible, oh boy, it is so sad. Because the father of all liars is the devil. So if you are being dishonest in work, if you are tricking your way through, through making it in life, it's going to lead you into unemployment. Even if you're working for the government, you're going to be questioned and you're going to be fired. And sometimes if your job has been your work, you're going to come out of both your work and your job because no government is going to employ you again. Praise God. Dedication. We ought to be dedicated to our work. I'm telling you, you won't need a job if you're dedicated enough to your work that God gave you. It's only that we don't know. You know, you find a film actor, he doesn't know where to go, he doesn't know where to start, he's, but it's natural, it's in them. You know, you're like, don't you know what to do? Start making some funny videos there now. Put them on Facebook. You got all these social media platforms. Begin to put something out there. Let people know your, your, your skill and your praise the name of a living God. You got to be dedicated. You got to be determined. Determination. That will sustain your work. That will keep you in work. The world, will, let me tell you, the world often does not remember us for our job. <laughs> It remembers us for our work. Because only work produces, or if you compare the two, work produces a more lasting impact in life than a job would. Yeah. Well, you're a banker, you've helped people with their finances and give loans and all that, you know, in the bank. 
But being a counselor of the people, advising the young, being a mother, like you mothered your own kids, you're mothering generations in the Word of God, and just being that, that leaves a more lasting impact when you pass on. That is the thing that people are not going to forget. Mother Teresa was not, I don't know any degrees for Mother Teresa. That I don't remember if I ever even care about reading Mother Teresa's Wikipedia and try to look for which degrees she took. Maybe now I will, <laughs> now that she passed so many years and I'm teaching about this subject. But she was remembered for her work, for her charitable deeds. God blessed her to help people. She, can, she had nothing. Whatever she donated, she would get up and fundraise and get $100 million in two days because everyone knew her work. You see, when you know your work and are operating in God's divine purpose, that, that means doing that very work that God called you to do, it is very easy for people to trust you. Praise God. You put out a fundraiser and it will have a lot of money. It may be so many people, it may be one person that God may touch, but you will always raise your goal. You always raise the funds to feed the goal. Because everyone recognizes. When you're in your work, everyone recognizes. But have you ever seen some people, somebody say, well, I didn't know he was for the bank. Like, Are you serious? Huh. You? You mean you can do that? Wow. I knew you to be a singer. Oh, well, you know, my father told me this singing stuff has no money and blah, blah, blah. So I had to study for another job. And that's how I ended up, you know, working here. You find the person doesn't even enjoy it. The reason as to why work is not producing in this part of the world is because people are not enjoying their work. Praise God Almighty. They're doing things they're not enjoying. While abroad, or in the Western world, it's the opposite. People are doing what they see a child and what they will do, what they can naturally do, that God-given. I think they have upheld this principle much more than we here in this part of the world. They see what you can do from when you were born. And they guide you through that. They take you to schools. If you're a musician, they'll take you to music school. They'll, they'll, they'll add some organized knowledge and organized information because that's what you get in school. The rest of it, 90% of the knowledge is God-given. He gives you the talent. You know, the first time I, I, I pressed the piano, I knew exactly what to play. I didn't play wrong things. So there was not a learning piano for me. I, I played the right thing. Meaning 90% of the knowledge God had given me. So what I need in school, or what I needed in school, piano school, was to just give me an organized, disciplined way of learning more. Because as we keep growing, we keep learning. Even in our work that God gave us, we keep learning as we grow. There is never that you have known it all. The more you grow, the more you are alive, you're learning. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Diligence. You can write all these things down. You gotta be diligent at your work. Do it smartly. Involve all your wisdom, all your efforts, mental-wise. Praise the name of a living God in your work. If you do all those things, your work will, success, will be a success. And, and these same principles, if you apply them to your job, you should note this. If you apply the same principles to the job, the only thing, the only negative you have with the job is oftentimes you don't like the job. You're just doing it for the sake of doing it, to provide for some. It's like if I would have walked out of here and I went to, you know, to, to begin to, to sit in a, you know, I'm a naturally a teacher, so working in a school is good for me, probably, you know. But it should be a Christian school where I'm, I'm preaching and teaching the Bible because that's what I'm skilled at. But, well, I would say, what job, you know? If I were a member of parliament now, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to lead a constituency. I'm a leader naturally, but yeah, because the work of God is connected to that, but it would be totally off course. It's not on the course that God created me to do. Then I'd end up frustrated. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know this business has a lot of kicks and you know, blows and people trying to kick you out and move you out of place for themselves to have the position and all that. All that fighting and killing and all that. I'd be so disappointed. I wouldn't even lead the people I'm supposed to lead. Now in work, Another principle, reverence to authority. Remember, all of these, if you don't do them at your work, you will, be, you will be rendered unemployed. Praise God Almighty. You take yourself out of work. You sit at home and be disappointed and depressed and not do nothing. And when you don't do nothing, food will not come on the table. That's what the Bible says. Reverence to authority. When you're working, 
we have our primary employer. Every man created, note this down, every created man on this planet, their primary boss and employer is God Almighty. Praise the name of the living God. That's the one that gave you that work to do. That's the one that sent you here to be a doctor in Zikuru. That's the one that gave you to be a football player. That's the one that gave you to be an actor. He is your primary employer. And in the scriptures, it tells us that in everything you do, in everything, whatsoever things you do, every single thing, do it as unto God. Everything you do or say, he says, do it as unto God. Work like God, your Father in heaven, who is your primary employer, is watching you. Because he is watching you. He is going to require of you what he entrusted you with. He's going to require the fruit of that which he entrusted you with in terms of work, which you can call your gift, your talent, and your divine purpose in life. So work as though you do not look at that boss as your master. That's where we get it wrong. That's where we become unemployed. That's where we become rude to our elders, to our authority in work. You know, we're like, but, but, but he's not paying me enough. I've gone two months. Do not look at that boss as your supply. Look at God as your supply. Praise the name of the living God. Pray for them. Because remember, you are full of the word. If you are full of the word, as we always learn at the Believer's Love Nation, every Christian must be full of the word, full of the spirit of God, full of faith and prayer, full, praying always. If you're full of these four, you can pray your boss into becoming an honest one from a cheating one. And if you're full of these, God will drop an idea in your natural God-ordained work that will get you giving him the resignation later and you get onto something that's going to have the whole world call your cell phone. Praise the name of a living God. Amen. If you're full of a word, full of faith, full of the spirit of God, in prayer, fool. Praise the name of a living God. So reverence to authority. God, take God to be your primary boss. Do everything you do with honesty. Would you lie to God? Would you cheat God? Would you be lazy in God's work? Because some people are meant to be musicians, but you ask them, how often do you rehearse? They're like, you know, my last rehearsal was two months, three months ago. And then you see the ones that rehearse every day, eight hours of every day rehearsing piano. They're the piano wizards of the world. They're the best teachers of a piano in the world. They have their lessons on Amazon and everywhere. People are buying, clicking, and buying piano lessons. And the man has millions of dollars in the account. Why? Praise the name of a living God. He's dedicated to his work. He's doing it with all determination. Praise the name of a living God. He reverences God. Praise the name of... He's doing all these things. He's diligent. He's disciplined. That's another one. You've got to be disciplined at work. You've got to set your time every day that you practice your work. Practice your skill that God gave you. Praise the name of a living God. So we talked about all, the, all of these ones. Now accountability, of course, is the same as reverence to authority. You have to know that there's someone to whom you are accountable to. The biggest problem we have amongst the young people in our world today is because, or is the problem of lack of accountability. The young people leave as though there is not anyone, any authority above them to where they have to give account of the things they do and the things they say. And it's not only the young people. Some old people are living their lives the same way. It happens both ways. They're trying to do things that show that they don't have an idea of a God above who set them to be the older before the younger. The Bible tells parents, do not provoke your children to anger just because God has given you a higher position to them. You cannot smack the child. You cannot do despicable things to the child simply because you are the parent. Praise the name of the living God. That should never happen. And when you're provoking your kids to anger over time, you're not being accountable to God who gave the rule. Praise the name of a living God. God gave the rule that did not provoke them to anger. Praise God. Do not deny them that which is rightfully supposed to be theirs. Because it will provoke them to anger. And the Bible said, the anger of man worketh not righteousness. And you have a whole mess. And you have a whole fight. 
Praise the name of the living God. But if you were accountable, if you were re reverencing the authority as a parent, because many of us are parents, I teach you as I teach myself, you know. There are things that kids or children have as rights. There is nothing as terrible as infringing on someone's rights or denying them their rights. Praise God. It is terrible, I'm telling you. Your right to leave, if someone went and took it out of, uh, away from you. Your right to speak, if someone shut your mouth and say, you cannot speak, and they put a glue on your mouth, you'd feel you'd have the most terrible feeling. And then they tell you, I'm shutting your mouth. I have the right to do so because I'm your parent. I have to put glue on your mouth for three days. I don't want you to say a thing. That's a human right now. And you are provoking the child to anger. Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah. So as we wrap up, you have seen the things that will help keep work sustainable as God meant it to be. We want to see the benefits, the reasons why we work, or the importance of work. All of those are one and the same. The reasons why we work is the importance of work. You know, it's the benefits of work. So first of all, we work in obedience to God's command. He commanded us to work. Our creator, the origin of work, commanded us to work. In the very first place, it's an obedience to a command. He commanded us to do so. God ain't told nobody to sit there. And if you don't do so, that means you have unbelief in God. As we say, disobedience is unbelief in God. That will bring you to sin. Praise the name of a living God. Because when you don't work, your mind will be idle. See, he's talking about the mind. A job is not usually in the mind. <laughs> As work is. Work has been ordained already in your spirit. He uses the word mind, but in your spirit. An idle spirit, which is a mind, will become the devil's playground. Reason? Disobedience to God. Hallelujah. A means to provide for our basic needs. Work, God has ordained through our work for us to provide for our basic needs. Food, shelter, and everything. Hallelujah. We work essentially as a contribution, our contribution to society. See, government runs, every government in the world, be it physical or spiritual, runs on the major principle of work. People must work to run a government. For every government to survive, there must be work. The people in that government must work. Now, if we take ourselves to be in the government of God, for us, by God, not the democratic government, because that's for the, peop by, for the people, by the people, you know, how, how is it? Government of the people, for the people, by the people. That's democracy. But now, the government of God is of God. It belongs to him. For us, for the people, and it's by God. <laughs> he did everything for us. He does everything he does the way he does it for us, for our well-being. So we got to contribute to that government through our work. What comes out, the fruits of our work is our contribution, becomes contribution. If it is money, if it is taxes, every government has a tax, including the kingdom of heaven. Praise the name of a living God. We got to give so that the government sustains its work. Not that God would need anything for us, from us, but that our government should move on. It's a responsibility. A lot of people hate tax. <laughs> They forget it's the only way the nation is, is running, you know. If you wake up in the morning and there's no power, there's no buses in, in the streets, there's no, I mean, you'd be so frustrated. You better pay your taxes. Praise the name of living God. Pay your dues to whom they belong. Praise the name of a living God. To fulfill God's purpose in our lives. That's one of the reasons we work. And one of the benefits is then God's purpose in our lives is fulfilled. Praise the name of a living God. To be a blessing to others. See, a job may be a blessing to you and a couple more that are close to you, but God intended that your work blesses others who may not necessarily be connected to you. Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah. He intended for your work to bless others who may not necessarily. When Inzikuru run that race and she wins it, Uganda is blessed. We feel proud. We feel happy. In our, she put a smile on our faces 
by doing hard work that God created hard to do. That's what work is intended for. While a job may necessarily be intended for you to provide for your own needs. See how small a job is and how big work is. That is why I told you in the beginning, work is the only thing that is going to give us a lasting impact here in life. That even when you leave, you will be remembered. It will be as though you didn't leave this earth. If you have done your work. Hallelujah. Praise God. To help the needy. The Bible commands us to help the widows and the orphans. The elderly. The Bible commands us to do that. And we can do that through our work. Even through our jobs. In other words, whatever we get from what we do, and it produces result, we're supposed to always remember those in prison, the widows, the orphans, the people in need. So we not only work to, to feed ourselves, work is not intended to stop on you. See, it's a generational thing. It's an eternal thing. It's a God thing. God never does things this, that are narrow to stop here. God ain't, ain't got those small little coiled visions. God's vision for this planet is this huge. And we're his children and we possess his divine nature. Praise the name of the living God. Why would we have so small a vision as small as working and doing everything we do to provide for our needs? Me and my children and my family and my... No, that's not what God blesses the works of your hands for. God blesses the works of your hands that you may be a blessing to the needy, every needy person in society. So every time you earn something, take off aside something to help the needy. Doesn't matter how much you earn, and you will see the blessing of a word, the Lord on every work of your hands. Praise the name of a living God. I'm going to stop with this. We have looked at something similar to it to fulfill the agenda of God in this planet. You see, God has an agenda through us. See, we're the, the, we're the imposers or we're the instruments of God's agenda on earth. He has a whole big agenda, like I told you. And for it to be fulfilled, some hands need to get to work. The reason that's why the result has not always been good is because we're outside of the agenda of God. We're, first of all, outside of his will for our lives in terms of work, his purpose of our, for our lives, which cannot make his agenda be fulfilled as fast as it could, as strong as it, who, it could, as good as he wants it. Praise the name of a living God. Hallelujah. So young people out there that are listening to me, especially from the third world, you are not unemployed, except you believe that I'm unemployed. You got something to do. God called you to do something. Trace back on your origin. Look within, look some grandfathers. What are you guys skilled at as a family? Praise the name of a living God. If you really have failed to find out what, there are some who already know what they're supposed to do, what God put them here to do, and they're doing it. But in case you find yourself totally unemployed, you don't know God's purpose for your life, you don't have a job. Look within. It's all on the inside of you. Praise the name of a living God. Look within. Oftentimes when we pray for people as I close, we're telling them to break generational curses. But do you believe that your generation only has curses? <laughs> no. Where there's a curse, there is a blessing. Praise God Almighty. <laughs> so we only emphasize, oh, break those generational curses. We break everything that your father, we're breaking people from the blessings that God commanded in their generations. We need to invoke the generational blessing on these people's families. You need to invoke by the power of your Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit of God, you need to invoke the generational blessings that run through your family. Some of you come from rich families and you're like, I'm the only child who didn't succeed. My father, my grandfather, everyone was successful. But something happened to me along the way. Then what the preacher does is to first break from you the generational curse. And yet it's actually a blessing. We're going to look into what made grandfather wealthy. What was he doing? If it was good, of course, if it was a positive thing, if it was not a thief, you know. Then we got to invoke, call back, you know, that bloodline of blessed businessmen to come back flowing through you and your children. Praise the name of a living God. Hallelujah. My family is a family of preachers. Since my dad received Christ, he changed the course of our generation into teachers, you know, in, in, in God and slowly brought up teachers on every corner in our family. 
Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah. Your family too has some blessing. You, you, you are tailors, you are clothes makers, you are fashion designers, you are actors. You know, your grandfather was a good actor. He was known all over this country. You know, your great grandfather was a cabinet minister for so many years and he, you know, lived all his life. And you have a couple of sisters, lawyers in the government. And, you know, why don't we invoke those blessings? to follow you when you can't find your way, when you're thinking, oh God, what did he put me here to do? Sometimes it's good to look, it, to look back and see, trace the line of blessings and invoke those blessings on your life and you will surely have discovered your purpose and God will help you be successful. Praise the name of the living God, hallelujah. Thank you very much tonight for hanging on all that time to hear the word of God. God bless you all and I just wanna say a short prayer is to establish these words that you have heard that the devil may not snatch them from your spirit in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for these, your beloved children, who have heeded to your word and paid attention to the teaching of the Holy Ghost regarding work. Father, even as we're in the starting stages of this, I pray that whatever they have received shall stick into their hearts in the name of Jesus, that it shall stick there permanently, that it shall be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. In the name of Jesus, those that were operating and living in confusion, that Father, you will bring clarity and understanding to them in the name of Jesus by the power of your spirit. Even those that are watching us from across the nations of the world who are wondering about work and job and having all this confusion, Father, we thank you that, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you have communicated to each and every one of us. And Father, we thank you always, always, for you are here in us and with us. In the mighty name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, have we trusted and believe everybody says amen. amen hallelujah clap those hands everybody to God <laughs>